Oh no! My whole arm got covered in... That is a big oversight. So that wasn't very good. It's not doing too well, this hotel. Today we're in Peterborough, voted Britain's worst town to investigate Orton Hall, home to English nobility since the time of William the Conqueror, once a prisoner of war camp. Today a luxury four-star spa hotel with a ton of online reviews, but not all of them good. So we've come to investigate. Now we have already checked in, so follow me and I'll show you the room. So we are room 146. Little area for the tea and coffees. You've got your hair dryer as well in there. Makes sense in front of the mirror. Ah, what do we have here? Biscuits. Tori will probably eat them. Probably won't get a look in. There's a room service menu as well. Excellent. Good to know that we can eat in the room if we want to. Always good for keeping bits and pieces out of the way. We've got a safe. Always good. Two fans. Always good in my book. Look at that. One of Tori's favourite things, a full length mirror. That is a very dramatic window. Really feels like an old room. We've got the bathroom just in there. Nice big mirror in fancy gold. This is just the kind of thing we'd have at home. So nice. And then period pieces. I mean, they're not overly impressive in terms of antiques, but they're, they're still nice, better than Ikea furniture in a room of this type. That's a nice view. It opens. Fantastic. I shall try not to break the glass. A few signs of age, but not too many. Must be a nightmare trying to keep a place like this. It's always handy as well to have a little desk for working at. I might do a bit of work there later on myself, actually. To get into the main hotel, you need to go for a twin bedroom. Tori and I don't normally go for single beds. This will be the first time we've ever slept in single beds as a couple. We didn't want to be in one of the wings or anything. So a twin it will be. Always useful to have a luggage rack or a luggage stand or whatever you call that thing. Look at those little tower pieces on those battlements. That is absolutely incredible. These curtains are good. They've got a good feel to them, quite heavy, which always helps a lot when you're trying to get a good night's sleep. Ah, radiator. My nemesis, my arch enemy. And that is very warm with an ancient heating system like this. There's probably no way to control that individually. And is that another radiator the burning away? I should have brought a spanner. I could have turned that radiator down. Let's take a look at the little bathroom. Well, that is an absolutely fantastic original feature. What do I spy here then? Gilchrist and Soames. Mm, that's quite posh. Nice and clean. All this shiny metal must be a nightmare to try and keep smudge free. Now for the all important pressure test. Yeah, that's pretty good actually. And they've kept a kind of look of the place with the slightly older style toilet and sink. That actually goes quite nicely in this kind of period building. The floor's nice and clean with a, with a nice tile down. But yeah, I can't get over that fireplace. What a fantastic feature. So we have checked the beds now for any visitors. And I'm pleased to say there were none. And actually the, the beds are really clean. They've got these kind of mattress protectors on underneath as well. And these mattresses are spotless. There's just not even a mark on there. I think we're pretty satisfied that we're clean. The room is clean. It's really nice as well to have this kind of seating area, like a mini living room where you can chill out, eat your snacks, have a few drinks. Very nice, I like that. I'd say cleanly wise as well, this room feels pretty clean. Everything feels and looks quite clean. All the surfaces seem pretty clean. Stop the press. Oh no. What is that that's leaking that's gone all over the shoe? That's disgusting. Whatever it is, it's coming from there and it's on there and it's on there. Yeah, I got a little bit of that on my finger a little while ago. I don't know what it is that's dripped down onto the floor, but it's some kind of horrible, nasty, dirty caramel sauce. 
kind of stuff dripping from the ceiling. It's gone all over the sides, all over the floor, and onto Tori's shoe, and she's not happy. There's even some over here, just there. That is a big oversight, and how someone hasn't spotted that, I don't know. That's, That's really bad. It's sticky, it's ruined my shoe, and not only that, if people are treading it, it's going to get traipsed all over the carpet and all through the rest of the hotel. Must have been one hell of a toffee sauce party. Not quite a saucy evening we had planned. <laughs> oh, it's such a shame, because apart from that, it's, it's quite a nice room. Apart from the heat. I'm absolutely dying from that heat, to be honest. So, situation update, there's more caramel sauce. Only this time it's on the back of this sofa. So I've just been sitting here, ready to do some work on the laptop, and my whole arm got covered in caramel sauce. So whatever that is, it's on the back of this sofa as well. So this is turning into a bit of a caramel sauce nightmare. So I've had to put this towel over the back for now, just to stop it getting on my clothes. But it's definitely got my mind wondering, I mean, how do you get so much caramel sauce around a room? How do you get it on the ceiling? If you have any ideas on how caramel sauce has got on the ceiling, or on the walls, or on the sofa, leave it in the comments below. So there is a little restaurant pub on the site called the Rumblewood Inn. We're just popping in now for some food. So we've managed to get a table at the, is it Tanglewood? Tanglewood Inn? The Ramblewood Inn. Ramblewood. So we managed to get a table at the Ramblewood Inn. So now we're sat down looking what's on the menu. Cheers, baby. Cheers. Oh, well, we've been waiting about 45 minutes for this food. And there's still no sign of it coming yet. I think a few of the other diners behind me are having some words with the, with the staff about how long it's taken. Not the most impressive place. I'm not sure I'd recommend it to you from the amount of unhappy customers I can see around me. Not brilliant. So that wasn't very good. So we didn't get any food. There was quite a few walkouts in the end. So we're just talking to a group of ladies outside that were there for a birthday. And unfortunately, they didn't get any food. None of their drinks were correct. I think she said that there was lipstick on some of the glasses, but it just wasn't very clean. So we just walked out. So we're off to find, try and find some food in Peterborough. Wish us luck. So we've come to the Harvester. I'm not going to lie, it's not my favourite restaurant. But, you know, it's unlimited salad, so it's not all bad. So let's get in there and get to eat, and then we can get back to the hotel. And... <sighs> so we've just got back from the Harvester. And now our door won't unlock. Unfortunately, it doesn't recognise us anymore. We're now imposters. It's not doing too well, this hotel. Not too well at all. Well, I'm finally in bed, and I've got to say that I am actually squeezed into a single bed, which is going to be novel. Let's hope I don't fall out in the middle of the night. Anyway, good night. See you in the morning. Good morning. Apparently, Halfway through the night, I woke up and told Tori, I'm not sleeping at all tonight. And she was like, you've been snoring for the last three hours. I was like, <laughs> oh, right, okay. Maybe I misunderstood. So, slightly eventful. Quality-wise of the beds, I'd say the mattresses are actually pretty good. Um, it's uh, almost as comfy as the one at home. We got a fairly decent mattress, and this one was kind of like sleeping at home, really. It was quite nice. So we promised you the price at the end of the video, and the price that I pay for this is £148 which is quite pricey for a hotel that has this many problems. The fact that there's just, there's not enough sockets near the bed where you need them. As you know, we also had problems with the room key not recognizing us randomly and we couldn't get into the room. The caramel sauce, after a little bit of reading, could be something called slime mold, which is not nice, is it? A hotel covered in slime mold. So for that £148, that does include access to the spa facilities, which is a steam room, sauna, treatment center which you need to pay extra for as well as a swimming pool i'm not sure that the facilities are really at their best anymore i think once upon a time they would probably be fantastic but there was quite a lot of rust this is actually a four star aa rated hotel um i think it might have been some time since the aa inspector was here that's kind of my thoughts on that one i mean it's it's possible i didn't see every room and um, but just generally the kind of vibe and the the kind of feel to things just makes you think that maybe that might be an old sign. 
on the whole, I think this room is is a fantastic room. It was it was so nice to be staying in a room that's kind of feels period, and that was nice. And it really does feel quite like an old room. It's got a sort of a bit of old soul to it, and we like that. So that's our stay at the Orton Hall Hotel and Spa in Peterborough done. And I wish I could say it was a better stay than it was, but as you can tell by the rest of the video, things didn't go too smoothly. I think with a bit of investment, this place could be really, really nice. If you've liked the video and like what you've seen, don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps us out. See you on the next one, guys. That ain't caramel. <laughs>